As a market leader in IP routing, obviously segment routing is very strategic to us. And uh, the way we view this technology is still evolving, but ultimately uh, its goal is to simplify the really large networks that you see in either hyperscalers or SPs. And its promise is really by taking a lot of the state that resides on the routers and put them into packet headers. I actually believe that it is going to, you know, come up, it's, it's going to create a set of networks that are easier to operate, that are easier to plan, uh, it has more predictable behavior, uh, in, especially when failure happens, and early days, but we're actually seeing a lot of interest in the technology from our largest customers. We're actually very serious about segment routing as a technology. We support segment routing, especially SR and PLS uh, throughout our routing portfolio, MXPTX. We have what I would claim one of the best robust carrier grade controller for implementing segment routing, which is Northstar. Um, Northstar has been used in the past for doing centralized control of MPLS TE paths. We expanded the capability of Northstar where it's now a full-featured segment routing controller that actually some of our cost, uh, customers are testing out. We have been able to implement certain things in our ASIC that allows you to do a set of very advanced feature with segment routing. I'll give you an example. Class-based forwarding is something that is often used uh, for providing very fine-grained SLA on a, on a network. We have that implemented in our router. We extended that capability to segment routing. We have done the same thing with very fine grain OAM and telemetry that, that we support in segment routing. We have implemented fast restoration for segment routing path. These are all things that are coming as direct feedback from our large hyperscaler and SP customers as features. How well you can traffic engineer a segment routing network depends on how many labels you can put on a segment routing packet. That determines the granularity of, of traffic engineering. We have one of the deepest label stack that we can support in both our MX and PDX portfolio. And as a result, uh, you can get substantially more efficiency out of the network uh, that we are running. SRv6 is sort of the newer uh, iteration on segment routing, still early in, uh, in design. The first set of SRv6 draft and standards that are out there in ITF, they have a few limitations. And one of the big limitations are they demand a lot from the networking ASIC. Now, for Juniper, that itself is not a problem because we, we do our own ASIC. They're highly capable, highly programmable. We can support the existing SRv6 standard. SRv6 is a technology that's going to span domains. You are not just going to see that in WAN, you're going to see it in campus, you're going to see it in, in data center. So the need for what the ASICs do had to come down to a place where Martin Silicon or there are, you know, our similar chips can support it, right? So we're working with IDF, with our customers. We actually have four RFCs that we submitted uh, where we're proposing a set of uh, enhancement to SRv6 that actually make it ASIC friendly. We have actual customers that have use cases where you might have an application in a, in a data center that spans a data center interconnect, which is a WAN. Then you might have another set of applications in a separate data center. They want to do domain stitching, which is basically you know, have an ability to have a set of packet follow a specific path all the way from you know, a server to another server spanning these domains, right? We have done deep integration of Contrail and Northstar. Uh, again, this is a direct feedback from a set of very large customers where we have the ability to do this domain stitching that many of our competition would not have. So we build features where you not only can run both protocols, you also have the ability to migrate traffic from one to the other. And this is where something like the North Star controller you know, becomes very, very important, right? Because you can plan, you can uh, 
view what's happening in the network, you can measure, and then you can do migration as, as the time comes. So it becomes a complete life cycle management of, of the network migration. We actually have a lot of information on our website, juniper.net. Please go take a look.